only between two and three percent of sent out resumes result in an interview. That's a scary statistic. So I want to help you out. And in this video, we are making a Notion resume template. Now I'll be using this database here and creating templates in this. If you want to know how to set this up, then watch my previous video. So the first thing we are going to do is click on the down arrow here and we are going to click on new template. So I'll write here new job. And what we're going to do is actually create more than one resume. And that's because 63% of recruiters like to get resumes personalized to the job position. So if we only have one resume, well, sadly, we are less likely to actually get a chance of getting this job. So here I will do forward slash and I'm going to click on page. So here you are going to write your first name and your last name. Now, we are not going to call this resume because when we save this as a PDF, this will show up and we don't need a giant resume header at the top. By the way, this is a completely free series on how to make the Job Hunter CRM, how to make the resume and how to make the cover letter all in Notion. If you find this helpful, please subscribe. Now I'm just going to paste some lorem ipsum text here, but you are going to want a very short paragraph here to summarize what you are all about. Now that is because the average time spent reading a resume is only six or seven seconds. That is not a long time, so we need to captivate them with a strong hook at the start. This one study showed that the easiest way to capture a hiring manager's attention is by having a 15 word summary at the top of the resume. Now, after this strong hook, that's when we're going to have a summary of ourselves. So this won't be as in depth as your cover letter, obviously, but you do want to have some form of summary of everything that you're talking about. Now, underneath this, we are going to have two columns. And to do that, we're going to do forward slash two and here you can see two columns so we'll click on that so on this side I'm going to write contact contact skills and awards I'm going to highlight these click on the three dots and do turn into and these will also be header twos then on this side here I will write experience and education highlight these click on the six dots turn into header two. Now you might be thinking, where am I meant to put the photo of myself? Well, this is up to you. However, an interesting statistic shows that 88% of resumes are rejected because of a photo on the resume. So if you want to include that, then you can, but that was just an interesting statistic that I found. So under experience here, I write job title, then the company, and then underneath that, you are going to have the date that you worked at that company. You're going to want to have these dates because a study found that candidates are most likely to be dismissed if their resume doesn't include the exact dates of their employment and I'm going to add a divider under this and I'll do the same thing underneath contact then here what I'm going to do is drag this invisible space between the two of them and just make it spaced like this so under contact here you can add your contact details so you'll have your email address phone and ideally your LinkedIn as well a study found you are more likely to get a job interview if you have your LinkedIn on your resume. So on skills, you can start listing all of your different skills, skill one, skill two. If you have any awards, you can put them here as well. Or if you've done client work in the past, it can be great to just simply list a few of the clients that you've worked with here. So back to the job experience section, I will highlight this and just make that into an italics like that. And then I will copy and paste this underneath like that. So underneath these, you are going to want to write a bit about what you did at the company, what made you a valuable team member, and how you actually provided value. As you can see, the resume is really starting to take place. Now underneath education, we're going to make it simple and copy and paste this and paste that there. And then I'm going to do another divider underneath that. So here we are going to write where we studied. So we can put that here and put another one underneath. Now, this resume is quite short. One thing to bear in mind is 77% of employers agree that more experienced candidates should have a two page resume and research shows that you are 2.9 times more likely to get hired than a one page candidate. Now bear in mind, this is more relevant for those who have enough experience to justify a two pager. Now, if you only have enough experience to fill one page, do not waffle on, that will not be a good experience for the person reading your resume. Now, depending on the country you live in, your resume might look slightly different. Every country has different resume templates and layouts that they prefer, but from what I've seen from my research, this seems to be a pretty good resume template. You might also want to have your references. Again, having references is different in every single country. Some countries you have to have it, some you don't, it, it really differs. So just do your research if you have to do it in your country. So you've written your generic resume. Is this the thing we are going to be using for all your applications? Absolutely not. So I'm going to go back and here in career quest, as you can see, here is the new job template. So I'm going to click this and edit. So here you can see the resume that we created. And what I'm going to do here is just take a note for myself 
yourself. This is a resume for a job type one. I'm going to copy this and paste this underneath. And now we have a duplicate of our resume. So if you properly filled out your resume and didn't just write Laura Mipsum text, you'll have your resume for job type number one. So maybe that's a specific skill or industry that you want to be in. And then here we have your resume for job type number two. So this could be for a different type of industry, a different type of clientele, or a different skill that you excel at. What we're doing here is not being too generic in either. We know that when we apply for job type number two, this resume here will be the ideal resume to send to those people. The reason we've done this is to speed up the process of you applying. That is also why we created this database. If you want to see that, again, it's the previous video. It will make your resume application process much faster. So when you're ready to apply to a job, you are going to click on the plus and now we are going to click on new job. So these resume templates that we created will open up here. So I'm going to say, you know what, for Notion, I'm going to do job type number one, which is database expertise, let's say that. And I'll click here on first and last. So this is resume type number one. I'll open this up in full screen. And then what I'm going to do is not just send this off immediately, I'm actually going to slightly customize it for the actual job that I'm sending to. This is because the average resume only lists half of the keywords used in the description. You want to ensure you include all of the different relevant keywords. You are much more likely to get a job interview if you actually include the keywords throughout this resume. So take the time to do that. Make sure the summary is unique. Definitely make sure that this 15 word or 30 word summary here is very concise and relevant to the job that you are applying for. 36% of resumes are dismissed for being too generic and make sure you read over so you don't have any grammar mistakes because 58% of resumes are dismissed if they include typos. So now there are two things left to do. We're going to go up here and click on the three dots. And here we are just going to check our word count. So we can see we only have 219 words. The ideal resume length is between 475 and 600 words. So just ensure you've written enough to properly and accurately describe what you are all about and your actual experience. Now, when you're going to send the resume, you have two options. You could either share it as a link. From my experience in the past, most just want PDFs. That's how most businesses operate. Yes, it is very cool to have a resume in Notion. However, from what I've found personally, most people don't actually want that. They just want a PDF. So we'll click on the three dots here. By the way, you can change font as well if you want. And we are going to click on the export button. And here we are going to change it to a PDF. And we are going to change the page format from letter to A4. And we will click on export. And then here we have our PDF resume that we can send to that company. If you like the way I think about Notion, check out Headquarters. It is my premium Notion template for your tasks, your projects, your life buckets, your notes, your resources, your bottlenecks, your journaling, absolutely everything you could want in an all-in-one productivity system. Click on this video here to see the full tour and thank you so much for watching.